Hello everybody, it's Fufu here and it is a very exciting day. We have had Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon leaks, which is just so exciting. I can't wait for these games and I don't have to anymore. We get some a little teaser of information now. I'm going to be talking about some of that in this video today. So there will potentially be minor spoilers more around move sets and things no story spoilers here but if you really want to be completely unspoiled for the games you might not want to watch this video so that's just pre-warning uh, but if you're okay with just some move set spoilers then please watch ahead this is going to be a really interesting one i'm going to be counting down the top five most improved pokemon in ultra sun and ultra moon and i'm going to be doing that with my friend john aka pokemon say hi john hey everybody i hope you guys are very excited for ultra sun and moon I mean, me and Sam have been talking all day about so many exciting things in the competitive game and the regular game. It just seems like this is going to be a very fun time for Pokemon fans everywhere. And I'm very excited about this video. I feel like this is going to be a very special one. A lot of cool things to talk about and uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and why we're so excited is because there are so many changes in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And it's actually taken me a little bit by surprise that so much may have changed. What we've got are move tutors, which are going to add a lot more viability for a lot of Pokemon which is great especially the new Pokemon who didn't have access to any move tutors before these games so that's going to be a big deal but also what we've seen is that some of them actually get new egg moves which is not something that I predicted at all and so we've got some really interesting moves on some Pokemon that already had access to all the move tutors in the past so that is really good and it's taken me by surprise and I'm just very excited for this list, so let's get right into it. Number five, Incineroar. Incineroar was my favorite starter Pokemon, and I'm very happy to say that it has got a significant buff in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And that comes mainly in the form of move tutor moves. So it gets Drain Punch, which is a good fighting type move. It already had powerful fighting type coverage in Cross Chop. But for maybe a bulkier set, you could be tempted to run Drain Punch for that recovery. It doesn't get stabbed, so it won't be super powerful. But if you do want some recovery on Incineroar, you can run Drain Punch. It does also get access to Leech Life too. So there, you've got a number of recovery options with Incineroar now, which is cool. It also gets Thunder Punch, which will help it hit some water type Pokemon. That can be very useful. And I can see that being run quite a lot because that is a very good coverage move. Obviously Incineroar being weak to water types, Thunder Punch could come in real handy. But where the main, main big difference is going to be is it gets access to knockoff. This is the premier dark type move. You want to be using this move as much as you can on physical threats. Incineroar is definitely a physical threat. It has a massive attack stat. And knockoff has a very high base power, base 97 and a half, I think, if the opponent is holding an item that can be knocked off. And obviously it has that secondary effect which gets rid of the opponent's item. So even if they're trying to switch in something that can take a knockoff, that Pokemon will still have a significant drawback with having their leftovers, for example, removed. Or maybe a Violite or something like that. Knockoff is such a useful move to have. Not only that, but the reason, another reason I put this Pokemon on the list is it gets a new egg move in Power Trip. Power Trip is a fantastic move. I don't see it used too often though because it is a little more gimmicky, a little bit more situational, but it's kind of like a dark type physical stored power. Stored power is a psychic type move and they both work the same. It starts with only base power 20, but the more stat boosts you get, you increase the power of the move by 20 points. And I think that Incineroar is a Pokemon that can take advantage of this because it can boost its stats in a number of ways. Most noticeably, Swords Dance and Bulk Up will be able to boost that attack stat, but also Flame Charge will be able to boost its speed. So you could try a very gimmicky set of Flame Charge, Swords Dance, Power Trip, because Power Trip will then be hitting some quite high stats, and it could be quite an interesting one to pull off. But I think Knock Off really is the main selling point here. The one thing we haven't seen with Incineroar yet is access to its hidden ability, which is Intimidate. That will also be a game changer, especially for VGC where the Intimidate ability is really quite invaluable. So it will be really nice to see that released at some point in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon 2. But for now, Knock Off really is enough for me. That is so exciting. Number four, Palisand. 
Moving on to an Alolan Pokemon that I really love, Palosan got a very fantastic move that we all wanted it to get in the last games, but finally, Palosand has Stealth Rock. Now, I know a lot of things have learned a move called Defog, and that might make, you know, Stealth Rockers a little tiny bit less valuable, but Palosand is one of the best Stealth Rockers out there. Not only can it get Stealth Rocks up, it is also a spin blocker. It is also immune to electric moves, to normal moves, to fighting moves. This is a very reliable Pokemon. If you want to get rocks up, you can bring this guy in on so many different Pokemon. It has bulk, it has the ability to recover up, and it's just perfect. Now, it has a lot of different coverage as well. You know, it also has stab, ground, and ghost type moves, which can, can be really, really solid. And Palisand is just a very well-rounded Pokemon right now. You know, there were so many things that that were, you wanted to use it a little bit more than Palisand uh, before it got Stealth Rocks. And while it's kind of weird that just one move is going to push it over the edge, Stealth Rocks really completes this thing. It was the missing puzzle to this, or the missing piece of this puzzle. I'm messing up the own analogy, but that's completely fine because we're just excited, we're having fun, and I can't wait to use my uh, little Palisand friend. Number three, Defog users. Okay, so maybe I cheated a little bit with this one because this isn't a specific Pokemon, but I didn't really feel like I could just make this whole list new Defog users because obviously it's such a big boost to so many Pokemon. So I'm gonna just do it in this one slot and mention a few of the biggest differences that I think we will notice. So I think Tornadus is a big one that's going to benefit here. It's got two forms, both of which will be good Defoggers. Tornadus Incarnate, with the Prankster ability, will be able to get a Prankster Defog, which is really cool because obviously it can be a last-ditch Defog even against things that are faster than you. That can be very good. But also Tornadus Therian, which has the Regenerator ability, it is weak to rocks, but it doesn't matter because it can come in, Defog, and then Regenerator off all of that health lost, which is really great. So Tornadus is going to be a good one. Another good one to point out is Florgus not weak to rocks and it's a fairy type but kind of out of left field here i don't really understand why floor just might get defog but it is going to be very good floor just is obviously most of the time it's a support pokemon and it probably can afford the move slot although it normally does have to think and drop some things it would quite like to use it likes to use wish and protect a lot but maybe you'd use synthesis and defog instead um, so yeah, Floor just should be pretty good. And another fairy type that will be nice with it will be Klefki. It does resist Stealth Rock and uh, yeah, it will be able to use Pranks to Defog as well. And what's interesting to note is it won't be able to get rid of its own screen. So if you set up Light Screen and Reflect, you can Defog and it will get rid of the opponent's Light Screen and Reflect, but not your own. So that's really good. Um, but yeah, all of these Pokemon can now get rid of the hazards, get rid of the opponent's screens, and that is fantastic. There are tons more, but I just can't warrant giving them all places in this list. So I thought I'd do a cover all just by saying Defog is a big improvement in general. Number two, Togedomaru. Togedomaru was a very cool addition to Pokemon Sun and Moon, and while a lot of people really loved the Pokemon and how it looked, it never really lived up to its expectations, which weren't really that high, and the biggest reason for that was it just didn't have a ton of moves that were super useful. It was pretty decent in VGC, and in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it's going to be even better in the format as it got a bunch of new moves, a lot of new toys to play with, and that starts with Super Fang, a really solid move for this Pokemon. Even though it has a 98 attack stat, Super Fang will be great if it's a support set, really, really decimate the opponent's Pokemon. I mean, bring it all the way down to half, the other Pokemon on the other side can just take it down, or you could bring it down to half and use another move, which it just got to take it down yourself. Along with that, it did get After You, Helping Hand, and Electroweb, which are really nice support moves in doubles. And while I'm not the biggest doubles player, I see their value. I really, really am excited to see other great battlers, just like Sam, use this guy to its full effect. And uh, those three are definitely going to help it out, along with Endeavor, which is a really solid move, especially if you're going to use it as a Sash Pokemon. Uh, Endeavor might not be the most useful of all of the moves it got, and the one that I'm very excited for, the one that everyone thought it should have in the beginning, is Iron Head. This is perfect. A fantastic physical uh, steel type move. Uh, it's going to help with flinching, which is fantastic. It's going to help with just having a stab move if you want to make it a Z move. It's just going to be great. There's so many fairies in VGC, and just having a viable steel stab move just does a world of difference, especially for this Pokemon. So uh, it got so many different moves. I think it's going to help it be a lot more useful just in general in all formats, especially in VGC, and I'm very happy to see that. 
So we're approaching the number one on this list, but a ton more Pokemon have been buffed, have got new toys to play with, and so I thought it would be important to run through some honourable mentions. So just quickly, the Oddish family now have Strength Sap. This is a healing move that decreases the opponent's attack stat and heals you equal to their attack stat which will be useful for Vileplume for example because in the lower tiers Vileplume is a physical wall and being able to heal while reducing the opponent's attack stat will be very helpful. A lot of dark Pokemon that didn't have knockoff now can use it and that's going to be fantastic for things like Alolan Raticate and Guzzlord as Stab knockoff is nothing to mess with and just in general anything that got knockoff probably got a little bit better. There are a lot more sticky web users, which is really cool. Some weird things like Slurpuff gets it, Rebombi gets it, but very, very importantly, Araquanid gets it. Araquanid obviously already used quite a lot because of that great water bubble ability hitting very hard, but it can normally spare a slot for a move like sticky web, so that will be really cool. No longer will Mega Lucario have to use Iron Tail. It can now use Meteor Mash, which is so freaking scary with that Pokemon. Not only is it a much better Steel stat move for it that is going to get the adaptability boost it also has a chance to raise its attack doesn't need that whatsoever and that thing is going to be an absolute monster Lilligant now gets access to Encore, which is really cool. We've seen a lot of Lilligant in VGC paired up with Torkoal. With Chlorophyll, it now has a very fast Encore that can be really helpful in that VGC format. And finally, there are a few more Pokemon that got Liquidation, which is very, very cool. And the ones that we noted are Kingler with its Sheer 4 boost and Barbarical, so it does not have to rely on Razor Shell, which was never fun when you didn't get the kill you needed or you just ended up missing it. Number one. Persimian. Now this monkey Pokemon, what a disappointment in Pokemon Sun and Moon. I really love its design and I think it had so much potential. Its stats are really quite nice to look at. It's got very high attack stat, great physical bulk and its HP stat is very good so even on the special side it'll be able to take some hits. Its speed is good enough for a wall breaker and it's definitely got those stats for it. So I was really excited about this Pokemon. But unfortunately, it just didn't have the coverage it needed. It did have those powerful fighting type hits, but for a lot of Pokemon that could take those fighting type hits, it couldn't really do anything to them. In Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we see Persimian gaining a few more fighting type moves. So it gets Drain Punch, which can be nice for, for example, bulk up sets. And the sub bulk up set could be very viable. We also see it getting Focus Punch, which could be very fun to use, but again, I don't think it will be all that viable. But then we do see Gunk Shot, which is a very powerful coverage move for it to be able to hit Fairy types. I can foresee that being run quite a few times, but the main one, the huge, the massively important one for Persimian is it gets knockoff. Eventually it gets a single move that can hit ghost types. This is really quite big for Persimian and I'm very excited for it. It turns this thing into a very usable choice scarf user. It can hit those ghost types with the knockoff. It can hit the fairy types with the gunk shot. It can U-turn around and it can go for those powerful close combats or alternatively you can give it a choice band and just hit things super, super hard. With that U-turn it's going to be a great choice user. I really, really do think that. And I do think that knockoff will give it an edge against a lot of the other fighting types that it just didn't have the usability compared to. The one thing that we are waiting for with Persimian is for Defiant to be released. I believe in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon you still can't SOS chain this guy, so I don't think you can get Defiant yet. I don't think it's released yet. But when that is released, with the plethora of defog users available now, it, that could well give it a plus two attack boost, so it can really dissuade the opponent from going for that defog. It has that powerful close combat, it has that knockoff to scare the ghosts, it has gung shot to scare the fairies, it can U-turn around with a choice set. I think this thing is going to be so much more viable. I want to stress, this video is not the top five best Pokemon in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. This is the top five most improved, and therefore I do think Persimian will be deserving of this title because before it was, it could kind of go overlooked. It wasn't all that great because it couldn't hit some of the Pokemon that wall it so hard. But now there will be very few Pokemon that are safe to switch in on this thing, and I'm very excited to see how well it does in the competitive matters. 
So that is all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope that you're as excited as I am for these games to drop. I can't wait to get my hands on the Pokemon in this list and many more that have been improved. Let me know in the comment section which Pokemon you're excited to see and what things you are very, very much looking forward to about the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games. But that's all for today. Please go and check out my buddy John, aka Pokemon's channel. Links in the description. He's going to be doing a ton more videos videos like this. He'll go into much more detail about the egg moves available, about the tutor moves available, and the benefits of those. So please go and check out John's channel. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.